selling any short notes.
Check one, two. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Grace on this, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, our opening hymn, 714, Who Trusts in God, a Strong Abode. Let us rise for divine service, setting three, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro at Psalm is printed on our readings insert, and we'll sing that responsibly. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we
Let us pray the collect for this day. Almighty and merciful God, it is by your grace that we live as your people who offer acceptable service. Grant that we may walk by faith and not by sight in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Seated for the hearing of God's word. The Old Testament reading for the, third, or the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven, the number of stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to them, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he con counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we sing the gradual verses on the insert. Hear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their com condemnation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that when we, so what is seen is not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which he was commended as righteous. God commended him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it would be impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to a place that he was able to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in a land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful, who had, who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many of the stars of heaven, and many of the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland, they had been thinking of land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. 
that as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, How much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. invite the children to come forward. Okay. Well, what a great day. We gather here to hear God's word, and we have a special event after church today. Today is Picnic Sunday. And we're going to go out and celebrate all the good things that God has given to us and enjoy the great outdoors a little bit, right? So today... Jesus talks to his disciples and he tells them not to do something. He tells them not to worry. Now, you might have heard the word anxiety. That's a fancy word for worry. He says, don't be anxious. Don't be worried about your life. You know why he says that? He has your life in his hands. He made you. He created you. He has your life in his hands, and that's why you don't need to worry. Lots of things happen in life that make it easy to worry, right? Because sometimes really challenging, hard things could happen to you. That's how things are in this world. Not everything goes like according to your plan, right? But you know what? Never forget, God has you in his hands. That's why no matter what happens, you know God is for you and you don't need to worry. Let's pray. Lord, give them hearts of great faith and trust in you so that they would not lead lives of worry and fear, but they would lead lives of faith and joy in you. Bless these children and their families. Strengthen them and watch over them all. Amen. And the accolade has some candy for you. All right. Our hymn of the day, 736, Consider How the Birds Above. 
God's grace, his peace, and his mercy be unto you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Fear not. Those words really stick out in the Old Testament reading and Abraham. And they tie in so well. Fear not ties in so well with what Jesus says to his disciples. Which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life. And if you're not able to do as small a thing as that, because that's a really small thing to God, to add a single span of one hour to your life, it's as nothing to him, and yet you can't add a single hour to the span of your life. He says, if you can't even do that, why are you anxious about the rest? Ah, why are we so anxious? Many people are anxious. Just pay some attention to the news, and it has a tendency to do that to you. Many Christians are anxious. They're worried about their future, and yet, who knows the future? But God alone. Today, you hear God saying, Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Do not be worried. Fear not. Trust that God is for you. Not against you. For you. In the first reading, though, Abraham, here this man of 
vaunted faith is found to be anxious. It's found to be just as imperfect and given to sin as you and I. He's worried. He and Sarah have grown old. He has no heir. And with no heir, how, he wonders, will he live up to the meaning of this God-given name? Remember, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham, which was meaning the father of many nations. Well, it's hard to be that if you have no children. He has no heir. How are the descendants going to be as numerous as the stars in the night sky? Abraham, though he is credited as a man of faith, finds himself anxious, even perhaps afraid. Afraid that he and Sarah will die childless. And then what becomes of the promise of the land and the Savior who was to be one of his descendants? And God sees his anxiety and he comes to him and says, Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward is will be very great. So Abraham had struck out in faith, leaving the city of Ur. Remember God had called him to leave that place, Ur? Leave behind its great temple. They were these stone ziggurats, as they call them. But they were built to false gods. And he was called to go by the Lord to a land that the Lord would show him, a land of Canaan, a land of promise. Fear not, Abram, leave Ur. And that becomes an act of faith. Abraham believed the Lord. And it was credited to him as righteousness. That's a really important verse, isn't it? Abraham believed the Lord, and it was credited to him as righteousness. It's not saying he was perfect and holy in any stretch, but he believed the Lord and God credits that as righteousness. The ruins of the city of Ur have been, of course, unearthed and discovered. And it's found to be a great civilization. He wasn't just leaving some podunk town with a few stone houses. He was leaving behind every convenience of the ancient world. Every pleasure that could have been had was there in Ur. And he left it behind. Ur was a great civilization before the rise of the Egyptians. So, previously in Genesis 12, God had called Abraham to leave that great place. Abraham would go to a place God would show him, but he doesn't know where. How would you like to do that? Leave beautiful Parker, Colorado, and just keep traveling into the wilderness. I'll tell you when to stop. It's that kind of a command, you know? You have to have some faith to do such a thing. And it says that's why he did it. In Hebrews, it says, By faith Abraham obeyed. He was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents, which is kind of an emphasis. He doesn't have any permanent place there. He's living in a foreign land. In tents with Isaac and Jacob and heirs with him of the same promise. But after all that, yes, Abraham also had anxiety and worry. No heir. Perhaps, he says, my chief servant, Eleazar, is going to be my de facto heir. Well, look, his anxiety and his worry were unfounded, just like yours are unfounded. Remember who had promised him. Behold, the word of the Lord had come to him, This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And the Lord brought Abram outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. To live by faith. You know, we throw that phrase around perhaps a little too lightly. 
It's not always so easy, is it? To live by faith. Aren't you always tempted, really, to look a little bit more by sight? By sight? Oh, yes, God did this for me. Oh, yes, God did this for me. But when those things don't seem to happen, don't you begin to have anxiety and doubts? Well, even Abraham did. To live by faith, it is to trust in the Lord for all things. It's to trust in Him above all things. And for a bunch of sinners, that's well nigh impossible, isn't it? As the letter to the Hebrews points out, faith trusts in the Lord. It's foundational to the character of all of God's people. It's only by faith that you can learn to trust in the Lord. Now, remember last Sunday, there was the rich fool in the gospel lesson. He was a fool because he didn't trust in the Lord. He trusted in himself, in his possessions, in his farm, in the bigger barns he had envisioned. And he thought he had everything prepared to eat and drink and to be merry. For himself, to relax. He would build the bigger barns. He would store all those goods. And God, remember what God said to him? Fool, this night your soul's required of you and the things you've prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. And I want to connect that closing statement because in the gospel they flow one reading into another. So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Well, you know what? You can't be rich towards God if you don't trust God. You cannot be rich towards God if you don't believe God's word. Abraham, with all his flaws, believed the Lord. That's why it was counted to him as righteousness. Fear not. Remember those words. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. Now contrast Abram with the rich fool that we thought about last week. Abraham would have a reward because he believed the Lord. But the rich fool would have no reward. In a sense, his reward was already all those things he was so happy with that he's about to completely lose. In fact, the fool has no reward. He has judgment. He receives condemnation. He's cast into the outer darkness. And see the contrast here with the saints that are lauded as faithful in Hebrews chapter 11 that we heard this morning as well. The saints receive commendation, entirely different from condemnation. Well, they sound similar, they're spelled similar, and they're entirely different. The unbeliever, like the rich fool, it's condemnation. But the saints, commendation. So we come to how this all related then to Jesus' words to us today. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Jesus is teaching you, you can trust him. He keeps his promises. So we have no need for anxiety. We have no good reason to worry. Oh, but I know, yes, challenges disasters, tribulations come to every life. They came for Abraham also. And the sojourn, if you read through his life history, his traveling to Canaan was anything but quiet and easy. But the Lord was for him. And the Lord is for you. We are called by his name. A stunning thing is said about us. Despite our failures and sins, 1 John chapter 3 says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, 
that we should be called children of God? And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Yet, sin and weakness and an unbelieving world, these things are always at work in your life, aren't they? To bring you into anxiety. To give you all kinds of seeming reasons to worry. Jesus knows you do worry. That's why he told his disciples this. It wasn't only them, that's for sure, then. Jesus knows that sometimes you're afraid of the future. You're afraid you can't control it. And Well, actually, you can't very well, can you? You can't even extend your life for a single hour. I mean, why do you worry about all these other things? Jesus knows sometimes you've forgotten that your life is really in his hands. Fear not. God says, fear not, saints of Grace Lutheran in Parker. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Believe the Lord. It is credit to you as righteousness. Believe the Lord. Live by faith. And then you are enabled to be rich towards God. You're not so caught up in worrying about, you know, building your bigger barns, so to speak. Then you can actually live a life of faith. Believe the Lord. Believe his word. You're called to be saints. To have a place among those who've gone before us that are talked about in Hebrews 11. You're counted as righteous through faith in Christ. And saints live by that faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. This is from the epistle lesson. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it the people of old received their commendation. You see again the contrast? The rich fool, condemnation. The saints received their commendation. But as it is, they desire a better country. And don't we all? A heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. Commendation. A great reward. He has prepared for you a city. An everlasting one. Fear not. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise to sing the offertory. receive an offering for the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
This morning we have the joy among us of a holy baptism of Charlotte Estelle Miller. So I invite you to turn to page 268 for the rite of holy baptism and for the congregation to participate in the responses as well as the baptismal party. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to atone for the sin of the whole world that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How are you to be named? Charlotte Estelle Miller. Charlotte Estelle Miller. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ, the crucified. And let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family Eight souls in all, you drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea. Yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Charlotte according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through the saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, she would be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. And the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, 
and encourage them towards the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Charlotte as sponsors in the Christian faith? Then answer yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going forth from this time forth, even forevermore. Amen. Charlotte Estelle Miller, do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, Charlotte Estelle Miller, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. Oh, going right over. Charlotte Estelle Miller. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sins. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ. Be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ. 
that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us rise for the prayers and we gather the party around the altar. Let us pray. Almighty, most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted to Charlotte a new birth in holy baptism and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And peace be to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. We'll continue with the prayers of the day. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their need. Our Father in heaven, we thank you on this day for the gift of your Son. We thank you for the gift of faith that we might call upon your name to know your promises, to trust in you. And we pray for all gathered here this day and for all who bear your name throughout the world, for your holy church to be strengthened Grant us steadfast trust in you. In times of hardship, turn our hearts always to you and to your word and promise. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we ask your blessing for those who seek healing, comfort, or peace. Remembering Eric and Alan, Cheryl and Travis, Susan, Kurt and Alex, Cindy, Esther, Chet and Thelma, Kevin. Eli, Stacy, Sherry, Carolyn, Craig, Lisa, Steve, Jesse, Connie and Pat, Glenn and Cindy and Laureen. O oh Lord, you know the needs of each of these, your servants. Grant them your grace according to your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who serve in elected office, for President Biden, for Governor Polis, for our legislators and judges. O oh Lord, grant to them wisdom and strength to do what is right in your sight and for the good of our country. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those suffering from war, disaster, or turmoil. O oh Lord, look with kindness upon your people in Ukraine and protect them from the dangers they face. Bring peace to those lands. Lord, in your mercy. Father, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we'll continue the service at the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, 
we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Depart now in peace. Now in peace. Let us rise. The body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy 
you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Seated for the closing hymn, 712, Seek Ye First. Well, what a great day to have a good group of the congregation together. This is the last month of our combined services, and so I hope you enjoy getting to see one another before we go back to the two uh, first weekend in September. But today is a great day to have the picnic as well, so it is at Bayou Gulch Park. The address is in the bulletin. It's on Fox Sparrow Road. Um, if you're familiar with um, Sagewood Middle School, it's really right next to that, uh, just out east of the high school. So, uh, one thing coming up this week that's not in the bulletin. Kirk, we have men's softball on Monday night at 6 p.m. Starting the fall season, the Mighty Grace Softballers will be at it again. All right. So, uh, what, what uh, diamond are you at for that? Uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, but which diamond? Oh, it's the same. Salisbury. Salisbury. Okay. All right. So, if you want to go out and root them out at 6 o'clock at Salisbury tomorrow, and uh, other things coming up throughout the week, um, especially to make note of the men's theology on tap. That will be Thursday, 7.30 p.m., right here at Grace. And uh, we'll be, again, discussing great theology and uh, just kind of supporting and, and uh, keeping each other in the Word. So other than that, have a great time out at the picnic. Uh, I wish we could bring our name tags out, but we'd probably forget half of them at home. Uh, if anybody has those stick-on ones, which I don't think I do, we could bring them out there. If you happen to have those, uh, bring some out. We'll bring a pen or something. Because uh, really, one of the great things is to know one another as a family in Christ and to be there to encourage one another and to support one another. So have a great time out there. I thank you for uh, participating in all that. And I had special thanks for our organist, Connie, this morning. There's a little story about this. She's laughing back there. I wouldn't be if I was her. I'd be throwing something at Pete. Yeah. 
Um, so I get this text last evening from our regular organist that he's not feeling well. Can you find a sub? I said, I don't know, but I'll check. It's kind of late in the game for that, you know, Saturday night. Um, so I, I text Connie, and there's no response for hours. So I'm thinking, she's still out of town. Maybe she's in the mountains or something. So I text back Dennis, no, I don't think so, but we're good. We'll be a cappella. You'll all see how much you appreciate an organist once you have us a cappella. <laughs> And then about 10, 10 o'clock, I get this text. She must be going, oh my. She gets back and she sees these messages. And she says she'll try. So thank you, Connie. You did more than tried. You did marvelous. We really appreciate you filling in. So thank you. All right. And to our baptismal family, blessings and joy upon your day with little Charlotte. And the Lord be with each one of you. We'll see you out at the park. I should myself. I'll probably be out there by about 11:30. I got to run home. I'm not going in this. All right. <laughs>